guys, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I'm so bored in quarantine, I'm wearing two shirts. Oh, oh there. So bored. Today we're going to be ranking the top 10 best, or I guess in some people's opinions, the worst, movies to watch while you're in quarantine. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more edgy horror content. Now let's get into it. Now I'd like to say a little disclaimer before we get into this. If you're someone who's a little freaked out about everything going on right now, which I can't talk about unfortunately, maybe skip this one. I'm going to be, I'm going, it's kind of a joke video. I'm going to be going, uh, ranking 10 films that are about viruses and illnesses that are basically killing people that are in, in the horror fashion. But maybe skip this one if you're feeling a little paranoid about everything going on right now. Fair warning, now let's get into it. Coming in 10th place is The Bay. This is an early Blumhouse film, like po uh, just right after Paranormal Life activity. They're trying to do the whole found footage thing. It just, they're trying to keep making money off of that. It's kind of a guilty pleasure film for me personally. It reminds me of Cabin Fever a little bit, which is also on this list. Just stay tuned. It's not fantastic, but I just really personally like this film. It doesn't have that high of a score on Rotten Tomatoes or anything, so uh, it might not be for you if you're not a big found footage guy, but I personally really enjoyed this one. There's a lot of really gross CGI looking bugs, which actually gotta hand it to this film for the CGI. It's not too terrible. I don't know, something about gross bugs bugs crawling on people's skin and really gets me ugh, gets gets me creeped out. I love it. Coming in ninth place is The Crazies remake, not the 1975 version. I don't know. I, I personally, this is one of those rare cases for me where I like the remake like way better than the original. The original's not bad, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's a little slow paced for me. I actually really like the newer version. It's uh, it's faster paced, got a real, lot of really good scares, creepy stuff going on in this film. This is one of those films, the, uh, the remake specifically, that I saw as a kid and it just freaked me out. So this movie just has some kind of nostalgic vibe that really just bothers me. So I guess that's why I really like this one. I guess there's some people that just don't, aren't super big fans of this movie or the uh, the remake or the original. I think the, I don't know, I think the remake is pretty good. It really bothered me when I was a kid. Uh, this movie and Chucky, I don't know why, both of those freaked me out as, ki as a kid. Really, really have high praise for it now though. Uh, go check it out if you haven't seen that one. Coming in eighth place is 28 Days Later. <laughs> See what I did there? Dad jokes. Yes, I had to put a zombie movie on this list, but in all fairness, this is mostly a sickness and illness kind of film, the way it's done. I like this one better than Weeks because it doesn't focus so much on the running zombies and stuff in 28 Weeks Later. And that is disturbing, don't get me wrong, it's very scary, but I think arguably the slow zombie is way scarier. Kind of the same idea as The Walking Dead, actually The Walking Dead ripped this movie off. Guy wakes up in a hospital after he was in a coma for a very long time and then realizes everyone's a zombie and he's just kind of like the last one alive. Now there's specifically a shot and you know what, I'm probably gonna get hate in the comments for this but I'm pretty sure it's this film. It could be in 28 weeks later, I'm not sure. But there's a scene specifically where like this drop of blood like uh, CGI's into this dude's face and I don't know, something about that scene bothers me because he turns into a zombie like 30 seconds later. Super freaky. I I love that. It's probably the first time in a zombie movie you you see that happen. Like it's usually like a, okay he gets bitten so he's gonna die in like eight hours. You know it's something like that. This is instant and it's just a drop of blood, no bite, nothing. It's just like whoop right in his eye and he's done in like 30 seconds. Pretty solid horror film overall. I'm not ranking this one too high because it's more of a zombie movie, but I would still recommend it if you're looking for a good like sickness illness horror film. Coming in seventh place is Wreck or Quarantine. They're actually kind of the same movie. Funny story. Spanish film director, uh, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that. He created Wreck in 2007 and I guess the American audiences really liked it so much that less than a year later they created Quarantine, which is basically just the American version of the same movie. Now I've seen Quarantine and I really liked it, but I've seen kind of like a shot for shot like scare video on YouTube and it looks like Wreck is a lot more interesting. I can't find it anywhere, I'm guessing because it's a foreign film. There's a scene in Wreck that I've looked up online where there's they're just sit, standing in the room and a uh, uh, the, the lady who's infected, he, she just walks in and she can't see anything. She just goes by sound at this point through the infection. And she's <laughs> she's just walking through and they're just like filming her and they're like, oh, we can't move. I don't know why, I just watch it. I watched that last night and I'm just like, Oh, nope, I actually took my headphones off. I did a nope and just unplugged it. I couldn't do it. So 
That movie looks twice as good as Quarantine, but I still like this movie. It's very enjoyable. Uh, you probably know it from the very iconic jump scare at the end of it with the girl sliding across the floor. Coming in sixth place is Contagion, of course. I mean, come on, that's gotta make it on this list. It's not really a horror movie. It's more of a thriller suspense movie, but you know, I mean, come on, it's this is like the quintessential uh, Contagion movie. It's, it's even there, it's right there in the title. I would recommend this one, I guess. Uh, this one is just way too close to what's going on right now. Like if I watch this, I'd probably freak out a little bit. To me, I find it kind of funny to be watching stuff like this. This one hits a little too close just thinking about the plot because of how close it is to what's going on right now. So maybe skip this one if you're even just the most little bit paranoid like myself. Coming in fifth place is 12 Monkeys. Now, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't consider this a horror film. I do. I think it's a science fiction horror film that has, it's very intelligent. It's a, it's kind of a mind f as I like to say. Uh, it really messes with your head. I love it. I, I think this is a, a fantastic film overall. It's It has so many, it's very thought provoking. You could watch it a, a couple times in a row and still not quite get it like myself. <laughs> There's this prisoner in 2030 played by Bruce Willis and he has to travel back in time to stop this other dude who created a virus that killed like most of life on earth in the 1990s. If you like anything that, that has to do with time travel, like being accurate, this movie I feel like is the most accurate time travel movie. Coming in fourth place is The Stand. Now this is is a mini series not a movie but I mean it's kind of a movie because it's pretty it's pretty long it's in four parts Definitely check this one out though if you haven't seen it. They're actually remaking it this year. It's coming out sometime at the end of this year. I think this this is a really good story by Stephen King. I just feel like the little, just a tiny bit low budget, some of the scenes feel kind of uh, not, they don't look as good as they could. And I'm pretty sure this 2020 remake is going to have that production value way up there, way through the roof. It's gonna look a whole lot better. I wish you could have the cast from this series and do it in the new mini series because the casting is perfect. I'm so excited to see what they do with this new one, but I, to me, it's never going to be as good as, as the original. If you try to read the book, though, you're going to probably be there for about like six months, because it is like this long, cover to cover. <laughs> Coming in third place is Terror Planet, and I know, I said no zombie movies, but come on, this one is so good. I, I can't, I can't help it. This one's so good. I was really trying to avoid putting zombie movies on this list, but then I was like, Ugh. Terror Planet's so good. And arguably this film is also has that virus infection feel to it, unlike some zombie movies. There's like a, specifically a scene where a guy, he has these like knives and he's cutting up the zombies and he's like really avoiding the blood. I decided I was only gonna put zombie movies on this list if they actually had like an infection kind of scare like uh, this movie and 28 Days Later. It's that same, it's that same feeling like if you get the blood on you, somehow you're infected, you're gonna turn into a zombie. I love the Grindhouse movies, all of them. They're just all so enjoyable. They're so ridiculous. Tom Savini is actually a character in this film. He does the makeup, so you know it's gonna be good. I have nothing but good things to say about this movie. I wouldn't put this at the top of the list, but it's a zombie movie and I'm trying to stay, trying to stay truthful to the, the just fever movies <laughs> instead of zombie movies. That's another video. Coming in second place is Cabin Fever, easily one of the best movies about an infection, disease, being spread around people. This is a gross effing movie and really surreal. It's, it's very strange. It's Eli Roth's first feature film. Some really gross makeup effects in this film that'll just make you squirm. I've said this before on this channel, but I feel like Eli Roth is a master at making films that I'm not a big fan of. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of infection films or anything like that. Besides like this list, that's about it. There's like some other ones I can think of, but I'm just not a big fan of those, honestly. But this one is just so good, you have to like it. There's really funny parts, there's really scary parts, and overall it just makes for this really weird amalgamation of just strange humor mixed with super gory, bloody scares. There's some, see, also there's some sequels to this that are absolutely terrible. I believe there's like a second one where they're at like a high school or something. I saw that one, not so great. Great. There's also like a Patient Zero movie, which I have not heard of. I don't know anything about that one. I tried to start the remake. That was a, an abomination. Also, easily my favorite scene from this movie is the bunny, and you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've seen this movie. And coming in first place is I Am Legend, or honestly, any incarnation of this same story. The Last Man on Earth is kind of the first incarnation of this film by uh, Vincent Price is the star of it. This is from 1964. Really good movie overall. It's a little silly. It's probably my least favorite incarnation of all all of them, but it's still a really good watch. The monsters in this film, the reason I say it's silly is because the, mon the monsters in this film are just like dudes with a, like a little bit of fake blood on their face and they're going like whatever the guy's name is like Vincent let us in Vincent let us in it's really bizarre but if you watch it enough times 
pretty creepy. Omega Man from 1971 with Charlton Heston, just a fantastic film. Just a dude in New York and he's surviving like this horrible plague of basically zombies who can't go into the sunlight. In this version though, they still can talk, but they're just a little more like monsters. They, they've got like a really creepy makeup on. They come out at night, but they're still like people. They're just like evil people. They're not really zombies, like how in the, the Will Smith version, they're basically just animals that run through the street and eat people. These movies based on the Richard Matheson book will absolutely terrify you and it easily tops my list. So go check any of these incarnations out. Thank you guys so much for watching my ranking on the top 10 movies to watch while you're in quarantine, unless you're paranoid. Don't, don't do that if you're paranoid. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Follow me on Twitter at KilljoyJake1 and on Instagram at Killjoy underscore Jake. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all. And be safe. Don't, don't, actually, this time, don't kill it. Just, just be safe, be healthy, wash your hands.